Hello, welcome to episode nine of Will's Guide. In a previous episode, I showed property lists on symbols in Shea Scheme. And during that video, I uh, was surprised because I used a predicate called Adam question mark. And I was showing that the symbol cat, quote cat, the quoted symbols cat is an atom. And then I was going to compare that to the, you know, whether or not the string cat was an atom. And I assumed that cat wouldn't, the string cat wouldn't be an atom because it's composed metaphorically of characters. And I was surprised when the string cat also was an atom, according to Shea's scheme. So that was funny because it was surprising. Someone commented on my <laughs> surprise. And I'll confess that when I made the video and I saw that, I thought, oh no, do I need to delete the video? But part of what I'm trying to do by making a lot of videos is get over the need to make the videos look perfect and certainly to get over the need to make it look like I know what I'm doing because I don't. You know, I'm a, a scheme enthusiast. I've used scheme for 25 years or something like that, but I don't know everything about scheme. And I also want to present something that's authentic in terms of, well, in some sense, I'm an expert in using Scheme. I've used it for a long time and use it in my work, but I still am surprised. I still make mistakes. So I want to show that. The other part is whenever I'm surprised about something, you know, I might be a little embarrassed for a couple of seconds, like, oh, I thought I knew this language or, you know, I'm supposed to be some sort of expert, but... Hopefully I get over that quickly um, and, and I return to, you know, a more open state of beginner's mind. Um, so this was a, an opportunity like that. So I decided to keep the video as it was. Now, also, I wanted to make three videos yesterday and I did. Uh, but, you know, I also just want to show that I make mistakes and it's okay. And beyond that, every time you're surprised... That's a learning opportunity. Okay, so, uh, all right, let's look at the behavior of Adam, question mark, and let's read up on what it's supposed to do, because obviously I didn't understand the meaning, and I started thinking about it more, and it's like, okay, well, it's a procedure, it's a scheme procedure in Adam. I don't know. Also, in my video, I think I mistook. Either I was mumbling and you can't hear me, or probably my brain was thinking one thing and I said something else, which happens a lot. And I said that Adam question mark was built into scheme or part of the scheme spec or something like that. As far as I know, it's not. It is an extension to scheme uh, that Shea scheme supports. And I believe that this extension has a history in a request from Dan Friedman to Kent Divig when they were you know, both at Indiana because uh, Dan's reasons schemer, or sorry, little schemer books um, and little Lisper books before that use the concept of an atom. So if you look at the little schemer, um, the the first chapter, atom question mark of this and that, atom question mark of five is five an atom. Yes, it is. And so, you know, what about a cons pair or what about a list? You know, lists are not atoms. Okay, definitely can agree with that. I'm not sure about strings. I guess I'd have to look at the little schemer to see if, if strings, I don't even know if strings are in the little schemer, to be honest. I don't even remember. Probably not. Um, but in any case, I was surprised. My current understanding is that Adam question mark is an extension supported by Shea scheme, maybe by other schemes as well. But I don't believe it's part of the R6RS standard. And I don't know what the exact behavior of it is. So I want to make a short video, hopefully it'll be short, where we're going to investigate. So I didn't look this up, okay? I'm gonna do this live, <clears throat> and I want to present, like I said, an authentic experience. I want these videos to represent as closely as possible what it would be like if you were working with me. Maybe if you were a graduate student or just an enthusiast and we had sat down and we're talking about Scheme and playing around or doing some hacking together, or maybe, you know, I'm coming to you because I want to learn something and we're just messing around. Okay. 
Uh, I'm surprised by this Adam question mark behavior. Well, how do we find out how Adam question mark begins? And it, it was surprising to me when I worked in, in industry and at startups that often when when a, a programmer, especially a senior programmer, noticed some behavior like that, they would often just kind of, you know, brush it off and just move on. And, you know, sure, I can understand that if you have things to get done, um, you know, just move ahead. But for me, every time there's something that doesn't work the way I think it did, then, you know, okay, well, there's some, some difference between my model of the programming language I'm using or the system I'm using um, and, and reality, and I want to try to make my mental model closer to the reality, okay? So um, I, I want to not sweep those things under the rug. So if, if I notice things like that or if I make mistakes in understanding, I want to try to track them down. And this is what I actually do in practice. This isn't just for videos. Um, but... I think a lot of people don't approach things this way. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. All right. Now, what I have done is put some links here to commonly used documents that I hope for the will use for this video. So let's first start with the R6RS standard. So I don't know. There's an HTML version and a PDF version. It's also the libraries. Okay. So we can try looking at both. Yeah. Let me try the PDF. You'll see if I can go all the way to here, the index. All right. So we're looking for Adam question mark. Is Adam question mark part of R6RS? Uh, all right. I don't see it. I don't see anything. I don't see any entry about atoms. I don't think atoms are part of the spec. I don't think that they're a concept in R6. Okay. Now, what about the standard libraries. Maybe they're part of the standard libraries now. Let's take a look at that. All right, so this this is, like I've said before, I think a really important skill is feeling comfortable looking things up in the standard. All right, I don't see anything here about atoms or atom question mark. The conclusion I'm gonna draw from this is that atom is not a concept in R6RS. Now I could also do a search across the PDF, okay? no uses of Adam question mark. And, and just, you know, one more time to be careful here. Let's just do a search for Adam question mark across this PDF. I don't see anything. Now, searching a PDF like this might, might be a little suspect. Um, so I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think Adam is, is here. And certainly they should be, you know, if Adam is a concept, if Adam is a predicate, I would expect it to be in the index. All right, so I don't think it's part of R6. I'm sure it wasn't part of R5RS standard. Now we can either look at the Shea Scheme user guide or we can look at the Scheme programming language. Well, let's start with the Scheme programming language. Okay, they're both you know created by Kent Divig. Let's look at Adam. Let's just look at it. Okay, here we go. Adam question mark 41. Let's see, what do we have here? Um, all right, so it's an exercise. So the fact that it's an exercise tells me it must not be part of R6RS. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an exercise. Define the predicate atom question mark, which returns true if its argument is not a pair and false if it is. Okay, so by this definition, atom question mark is means that something's not a pair. All right, so let's start up Shea and let's test to see if that is the definition that Shea scheme seems to use. So first of all, I can define my atom. I'll do my own version. I'll leave the old one in place. So let's have a function that takes some, some sort of thing. And we could write this several ways, but there is a pair predicate in scheme it says, well, you know, true or false, whether or not something's a pair. And so I can just negate that. All right, how about that? So I've got my atom. So let's try my atom. My atom on cat, symbol cat, true. My atom on string cat, true. Okay, let's build up a pair. So let's say cons three, four. Okay, false, that's right. 
list, three, four. We'll talk about the difference between lists and pairs at some point. Also false, great. What about a procedure? What about lambda x, x? True, okay, that's an atom. What about a built-in procedure like plus? That's also true. All right, um, now what about some type that isn't a list but is a compound, like vector? Vector is also considered an atom. Okay, so my guess is that this notion of atom question mark goes back to you know old days of Lisp, or probably the little Lisper, and then the little schemer, and the old notion of an atom in a language where you have things like numbers and booleans and symbols, maybe strings, but maybe not even strings. And then you have pairs or lists. Okay, and so lists are are useful because you can take the cars and cutters. And even though strings are composed of, or you can get your hands on the characters of a string, you know, even though that is true, uh, you know, it 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 is it does feel different than um, you know a pair because you often use recursion to process lists. Recursion over strings is different because you don't have a string that contains a string. You don't have like a tree structure for strings, you know, where you can for nested lists. So it is true that you tend to process lists differently and pairs differently. So I think that's where the definition of Adam came from. Let's just check one more thing. Let's just check to see if there's anything about atoms in the Shea, uh, sorry, the Shea Scheme User's Guide. Now, I do notice that if I look, you know, if we look for Adam, question mark, the only uh, listing here is page 41, okay? Now let's see if, when we look at the Shea Guide, if 40, page 41 in the Scheme Programming Language 4th Edition is also referenced. So let's look for Adam question mark. Okay, great. So this is the nice thing about the cross-referencing between the Shea Scheme User Guide and the Scheme Programming Language 4th Edition is if the Scheme Programming Language 4th Edition has an entry for that topic, you'll see it listed in the Shea Scheme User's Guide with a T in front of the page number. So this page 41. And in fact, if I open that up, <clears throat> uh, it brings us to the scheme programming language. And then we see our uh, exercise we just saw. Okay, so great. So what this really means is, if you want to look something up in the scheme programming language, uh, fourth edition, and also in Shea Scheme, just go to the index of the Shea Scheme user's guide, because it will also have a link to uh, the scheme programming language. Okay, so this you know, there, there's sort of no reason uh, that we have to go to to both to check this out. Now, Adam question mark, 133, notice that's in italics. So that might be a definition, like that might actually show the, the, the code for it. Let's see what the italics, italics mean here. So I don't like looking at something, uh, looking at an, an index, for example, and seeing some special notation like italics and not knowing that what that means. Well, page number, okay, so let's just read the whole thing. Okay, this index is a unified index for this book in the Scheme Programming Language 4th Edition, TSPL4. Page numbers prefer, uh, prefixed by T refer to the latter document. Italicized page numbers refer to the primary description of a syntactic form or procedure. Okay, so there may be other uh, pages that, that talk about a concept, but the actual primary description is the italicized one. So that, in general, that's where you should start if you're looking something up. All page numbers appearing here refer to the printed version of these books and also serve as hyperlinked text to the corresponding locations and electronic versions of those books. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, so for a web page, it's not really clear what a page number means. It's different. And... I do have the printed version of the Shea Scheme programming, uh, the, the Scheme Programming Language 4th Edition. It's actually, I like having the bound versions of, of a book like this, even though for reference, it's more convenient to look things up this way. Um, but, you know, it's a nice book to just read through. And one way I use something like the Scheme Programming Language 4th Edition is in addition to a reference guide, 
I also just periodically go through the book and try to find areas of scheme I don't know about, or am I, I'm a little light on the same with the Shea Scheme user's guide. Uh, Shea Scheme has all sorts of extensions to standard scheme that are quite interesting. So I'll just go through the guide and, you know, I haven't read the Shea Scheme user's guide cover to cover. I probably should. Um, I don't know. Maybe these videos will be an excuse to do that. All right, here we go. Uh, in any case, here's here's the uh, the the description of Adam question mark and look, it's in section seven point two of the the Shea Scheme user's guide, which is talking about pairs and lists. Adam question mark of some object returns hash t, which is a a true value in Scheme. Anything other than hash f is considered true in Scheme, actually. Returns hash t if obj is not a pair, hash f otherwise. And this is a library. Um, so R6RS supports libraries. So there's a Shea Scheme library that Shea Scheme supports. So that's the library in which this is located. This uh, Adam question mark is located. Adam question mark is equivalent to lambda x, not pair of x. Well, um, let's see, what's my definition? Yep, same definition, okay. In fact, I even chose X as the name. So it's, a, it's exactly the same definition. And here, here are some um, examples. Well, let's test it out and let's really make sure that the um, Adam question mark of Shea also, you know, behaves um, as we expect or as claimed and, and it behaves the same as as our definition. So let's see, I wanna run all of these. How about this? I'll, I'll stick these calls to Adam question mark in a call to list. And so the list I get back should be all um, hash T's. I just have to be a little careful here because I'm, I'm adding these, um, you know, uh, comment characters, semicolon, it makes something a comment to the end of the line, and I want to make sure I don't comment out the in parenthesis. So let me try this. Okay, that should be false. That should be false, true, and true. False, false, true, and true. Okay, we got the expected behavior. Now let's replace the Adam question mark with my Adam question mark. Do, 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 do. And sure enough, we get the same behavior. So that's the story about Adam question mark. It's really just a not pair. Um, that's the, the equivalent to, to a not pair uh, test. All right, that's what it is. Why it exists, I suspect it has to do with the little schemer or the little lisper. I suspect that's, and, and, and I think Dan told me some history about this many years ago, if I remember correctly. Um, but that's the behavior. So. Really, it's just not pair. It's a predicate that's like not pair question mark. So that's why uh, symbols and 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 uh, strings are treated the same according to Adam question mark. So it's not a particularly useful predicate unless you're just testing to see if something is a pair or not. the The other thing that's interesting is, you know, speaking of of, of lists, you know, there's the empty list. So if I call the list function with no arguments, I get back the empty list or also I can do quote empty list. And so according to this definition, quote empty list is an atom. Okay, so even though if I ask if um, empty list is a list, it is a list, but it's also an atom. So um, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting thing. Uh, so that that's an atom. But you know, if if uh, if I ask if it's a pair, of course the answer is no, because a pair has parts to it, and a pair is something I would construct, say, with cons, and I get this what's called a dotted pair back, and I create a list, a proper list, by using cons and making sure that the you know innermost call to cons has the empty list as its second argument. Okay. Now I can ask, is that a list? Sure. And is it an atom? Better be no. False. Okay, there we go. 
that's the story on Adam question mark and moving on to the next video. Thank you.